Hello Tangerines from Santiago de Querétaro, Mexico. Recently there have been some major changes that might just mean the end of Mexico travel as we know it. And I'm going to get to that in a little bit, but first I need to grab some dinner here at my favorite taco joint in Querétaro. Tacos El Huero always gets super busy, so I try to get here early. I got here at like 6.30 today, they open at 6. By 7.30 this place is going to be packed for the rest of the night and there's going to be a line out the door to get a table. Uh, quiero un taco de tripa dorada, por favor. Sí. Y dos de lengua. Y dos de... no tengo de lengua. Ah, uh, no, tengo hay de... Tengo solamente cabeza surtida, de aquí para arriba. Pues, dos de chorizo y un de suadero. Con todo, cebolla, cilantro y salsa. Sí, por favor. Uh, for dinner, I got uh, four tacos. Unfortunately, they didn't have my favorite one available tonight, which is the tongue tacos, the tacos de lengua. So I'm just going to have to make do with what I have here. But still, everything I've tried here has been really good. All right, I'll start with the chorizo. Mm. Oh. That has some spice. Oh, that's way spicier than before. Ooh. Does lime make it less spicy or more spicy? Does that do anything? I'm gonna try it. <laughs> okay. More bearable with lime. And to drink, I got the water with, what is it? Uh, lime and chia seeds. They're pretty good. I usually get the cucumber and mint option, but they didn't have that tonight either. I swear, Tacos El Huero is probably the fastest taco restaurant I've ever been to in Mexico. Every time I come here, I can't believe how fast the food is in front of me. Like this time, it probably took them 60 seconds from the time I ordered to the time I had my plate. <laughs> so freaking fast. Okay, let's try the tripa. They say this is healthy because you have like all the nutrients from the intestines. So you just, I just can't think about what I'm eating. I'm eating a taco. That's all I can think. <laughs> and as long as I don't think about the intestines, I actually like it. <laughs> well, aside from my mouth being pretty hot because I think they made the salsa a little spicier than normal, this was really good. Uh, still a little upset I didn't get my tacos de lengua that I always get. Um, but all the ones I did order were 12 pesos a piece. The tacos de lengua that I like are more expensive at 25, but I think they're definitely worth the price. Tacos El Huero is in one of the more humble parts of the city. But because of its close proximity to one of the richest parts of the city, Campanario, you see all these fancy cars outside like Audi, Mercedes, BMWs, things like that. Because it's a very popular place for both the well-off and everyone else. Now I'm taking a quick Uber to Centro. If you're finding this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel. You can do it for free with the click of a button and it just lets YouTube know that you're interested in our videos and that you want to see more of them from our life in Mexico. So why do I say this might be the end of Mexico travel as we know it? Well, for a long, long time now, many years, it's been the case that you could come to Mexico and get a 180-day tours permit without having to fill out any visa form in advance or anything like that. And then when your 180 days was up, you could just go do a quick border run and come right back and get another 180 days. And people would do that for years and years and years. Well now, that's gone away. But not only has the been able to renew that go away, like coming for 180 days and then leaving and then coming back, but also people aren't even getting 180 days and in a lot of cases, they're only getting as many days as they can prove they have a hotel booked for. So what do these changes mean for people coming to Mexico? Well, if you, if you want to do the trip that Maddie and I did when we first came to Mexico, you really wouldn't be able to count on doing that because uh, we hardly ever had a few nights ahead booked for our Airbnb or hotel. Uh, we were often booking where we were going to stay 
that day. Now, since a lot of people are only getting however many days they can prove they have a hotel reservation for, that like doesn't allow anyone who wants to like, let's say come for a week and have a hotel book for a week and then go to their next destination, but maybe they don't know where they're gonna stay in their next destination yet or something like that. So basically, if you wanna stay in Mexico for an extended period of time as a foreigner, your only option now is to go through the process to get residency, either that or just overstay your tourist visa and uh, be illegal in the country and uh, risk deportation if you get caught. But at the same time, that they're basically forcing everyone to get residency, the requirements for residency just got much, much higher. So the financial requirements for residency are a function of the minimum wage in Mexico. So say for example, they might say, okay, you need 500 times the daily minimum wage in savings or something like that. So as the minimum wage goes up, so do the requirements to achieve residency. Well, at the beginning of 2022, they just went up again and they've been going up substantially every year for the past six years or so. And in 2022, they went up 22%. So since the minimum wage increased on January 1st from about 140 pesos a day to 173 pesos a day. So now if you want to get temporary residency, you need 43,000 in savings and investments uh, provable over the last 12 months. So that had to be your minimum balance over the last 12 months or 2,600 in monthly income over the last six months. Now, if you want to be a permanent resident, you either need 173,000 US dollars in savings and investments or about 4,300 in monthly income. And according to one website I came across, they were predicting that next year in 2023 that the minimum wage would increase to 215 pesos a day it would mean another more than 20 percent increase so if that's true in 2023 to get temporary residency you're going to need a monthly income of more than 3,000 us dollars and to put this in perspective of just how difficult these residency requirements are getting in 2018 when we came to mexico you needed about 1300 a month in income or about $20,000 in savings. So since then, they've literally doubled. The requirements have doubled in four years. Uh, and they're on pace to do that again. The music in the plaza got really loud and kind of ruined the audio for this part, so I'm gonna try to re-record this. But to start the process for the most common way to get residency, you have to go to a Mexican consulate outside of Mexico. And at the same time, they're basically forcing everyone to get residency who wants to be in Mexico for any extended period of time. Well, the consulates have no more appointments available than they did before. So these consulates are getting super busy and it's really hard to get an appointment and people are flying across the country just to get an appointment. And at the same time, fewer and fewer people are able to qualify for residency every year because the requirements are being raised so quickly. You know, it's kind of crazy that to get temporary residency today in 2022, it takes $2,600 in monthly income when $1,800 in monthly income puts you in the top 1% of earners in Mexico. So you literally have to be well into the top 1% to be even able to qualify for temporary residency. And that's not even talking about permanent residency. But this system was put into place when the minimum wage in Mexico was much, much lower. Um, so when they tied it to the minimum wage, these financial requirements, in my opinion, were fairly reasonable. But now, after a number of years of really big hikes in the minimum wage, now uh, the requirements are just that much more difficult. Now these numbers that I just gave you, they aren't set in stone, but they are pretty close to what you need. Uh, however, to know the exact number of what you're going to need, uh, you're gonna have to contact a Mexican consulate near you or the one uh, you get an appointment at because each different consulate 
has different financial requirements. So what do I think the result of all these changes in the immigration policy is going to be? Uh, them not giving 180 days anymore and only giving a couple weeks in many cases. Well, honestly, I think it's going to create a lot more illegals in the country. Um, before, the system was uh, pretty simple. If you didn't want to get residency, you just had to leave every six months or so. Um, but now that's not really an option. Uh, so I think there will be a lot more people who are deciding, hey, I'm just not going to leave and I'm going to have, I'm going to lose uh, my tourist visa or I'm just not going to care about it and hope I don't get stopped by immigration. And if I do get stopped, well then I get deported and I get a free plane ride back to my country. Uh, now, I'm not saying that's what you should do by any means. Um, I'm just like trying to think of how this might play out. Uh, what other consequences might it have? Well, I think we're going to see a lot fewer digital nomads here and a lot fewer like extended stay travelers who were hoping to stay for a few months and uh, travel around and see various places. Even if you do qualify for those residency requirements, a lot of people say, oh yeah, it's super easy to get residency. Well, I mean, the process is pretty straightforward, but it's still quite a bit of work to go through that whole process. Like, you might have to plan a trip across the country or from Mexico to the U.S., and then you have to get a whole bunch of documents in order. You have to contact your uh, bank and uh, get like certified letters depending on the consulate uh, saying that you own the account or whatever. There, there's quite a few requirements that you have to bring to that consulate appointment and everything has to be in order if you want to get approved. Uh, so yeah, it's not the easiest task. So yeah, I think it will, uh, a lot of people just won't want to go through that even if they do qualify. There are a lot of people in the U.S. and Canada who want to leave their country, whether that's them seeking a cheaper life, uh, a different culture, or something else. And I think Mexico is the first choice for a lot of those people, largely due their, to the proximity to their country. Uh, it's just reasonably easy to get to and a pretty short flight. But with these new immigration changes, well, I see more and more people choosing other countries, whether that's another country in Latin America or South America or a Southeastern Asian country like uh, Vietnam or Cambodia or something like that. I think we're going to start to see a lot more foreigners choosing to not go to Mexico if immigration doesn't change these policies soon. I think another result of these changes will be more people seeking out loopholes in the system. For example, I've heard of this service that uh, someone will have shell companies and whoever wants to get residency they'll hire that person on as an employee and then that employee to this Mexican company can get residency pretty easily so with whether people can't get an appointment at a consulate or they can't qualify for the new financial requirements or they just don't want to go through that process and getting all their documents together uh, to do that, well, I think you'll see more and more people seeking out services like this one. If you're wanting to come to Mexico or another Spanish-speaking country, the single best thing you can do for yourself is to start learning Spanish. Our favorite program is called Rocket Languages. It's not only a great value, but it's also a really thorough course. And no matter what type of learner you are, it has something for you. Personally, I'm an audio learner. That's, that's my strength. I love audio books. And Rocket Languages has these audio lessons that get you speaking in full sentences pretty quickly. And the single most nerve wracking thing about learning a new language is speaking these brand new words to total strangers. It's a, it's a really hard hurdle to get over, but when you can start speaking full sentences out loud as you're doing these audio lessons, it really helps to get over that hurdle. So if you'd like to check out that program, you can go to tangerinespanish.com. That's our affiliate link and it will take you right there. Again, that's tangerinespanish.com and you can start a no credit card required free trial so you can see if it's right for you before you give them any information. If you're wanting to get residency in Mexico, 
I highly recommend the, using the help of a specialist. Uh, they usually charge about $200 to help you through the process and that uh, usually involves helping you uh, make the appointment at the consulate, making sure all your paperwork's filled out correctly, going to immigration for you so you don't have to make a bunch of trips there. You will have to make one trip there in Queretaro. Uh, but the guy I highly recommend, his name is Mario. Uh, he goes above and beyond. He's super professional, speaks perfect English. Uh, anyway, I'll leave his information down in the description below. I don't have any kind of financial relationship with him. I just highly recommend him. So uh, yeah, if you want to get residency in Mexico and you're going to come to Querétaro, definitely uh, look for Mario. And finally, the last thing I think might result from this, if Mexico sees a huge drop in tourism and extended stay travelers, and they realize that, hey, there's a lot of people who want to come to Mexico and can easily afford it, but they can't get residency, so therefore they can't come to Mexico for an extended period of time. Well, maybe that will result in a policy change. That's my hope. That, that's what I hope will come out of this. But until then, we got to deal with what we have here. Thank you guys for watching. On the screen here is another video I made recently, so you can watch that one until we see you next Saturday morning. But before you go, please subscribe to our channel and gong that bell so you get notified every time we release a new video and we will see you on Saturday morning.